And for more on ESG investing, its opportunities and challenges, we're joined by Ricky Jacobson. She's head of ESG research at Nordia Asset Management. Ricky, good of you to join us. Um, I don't know if you've been watching uh, that package that we ran early on, but it does seem like all things in the U.S., even ESG investing, uh, is split among party lines. I mean, do the detractors though have a point that investments made based on political ideology, not based on maximizing returns, means that you're going to be costing people money when you play politics? Well, uh, thank you for having me. And I think this uh, is a really good question. Um, I think ESG is, I think, everything that we think, do, act today. Uh, a lot of people tend to minimize it into politics, but it is actually every day, everywhere, uh, for everyone that lives in this society and environment. So I think ESG is here to stay, regardless of some people believing it be um, politically uh, driven. Okay, so let's get into ESG investing. Now, institutional retail investors usually delegate investment decisions to portfolio managers who are then supposed to be superior in picking stocks that will outperform. But they also have to assess the firm's ESG credentials. Is that where you come in to ensure that firms and products are properly accredited? Yeah, so the uh, the collaboration that my team and I have with our portfolio managers in the as management is that we provide ESG research so taking um, a ESG angle, sustainability angle on the companies we invest in, looking how they perform on a number set of ESG matrix uh, here under, for instance, climate change, which I think everyone um, can sign under that this is something that is uh, very important for, for us as a society and for, for if we want to ensure that we have a place to live for the coming years. And, and it's a way for us to create real world impact. Um, how we work is that we provide ESG research um, we are directly on company level, but also on sectors directly to the portfolio managers. It's a very strong collaboration with our portfolio managers where they provide the financial side and also have a very strong view on EST topics. And then together we pick and identify the companies that have a very strong offering uh, and tradition, um, perspectives in terms of what the future opportunities might bring within that sector or industry that they want to invest in. So it is a very strong collaboration um, where we um, provide ESC research. So going back to that earlier question, can investors have it both ways? I mean, it's hard enough trying to pick winning stocks, but with ESG credentials as well? So our view is that ESG will help us identify the companies that will have a uh, stable and positive return long term. So we are long term investors. We are looking for companies that has the opportunity to be um, delivering on a number of ESD matrices, not only on the short term, but on the long term. And in that sense, we believe that it is not just about disclosure. Uh, disclosure is super important, but it's actually about identifying the companies where we, there's an opportunity for them um, to perform stronger compared to uh, those that has a less strong ESG profile. A very good example of this is governance. So governance is one of the ES and G pillars, uh, and a company would have who have a strong corporate culture, uh, who is having a strong board, senior management profiles. Um, we believe that they have a likely pro uh, probability to perform long term. Let me throw some figures at you. Um, according to PwC last year, ESG-focused institutional investment is expected to soar some 84% to nearly $34 trillion by 2026. That, that means uh, every $5 spent, $1 will be in ESG. How do you account for this massive growth predictor? So I think it's driven partly because I think uh, the, we have a younger generation, generation set, who has a different awareness, a different preference in terms of sustainability, ESG investing. They will definitely help drive that push into ESG and sustainable products. Uh, I think regulation is definitely also a key factor for us to see that bump up. But I also understand, I think that we see a lot of natural disasters, climate change, uh, and people will seek where they can contribute. One thing is on personal consumption, but via investment, you can have a really large impact on a broad scale. So I think that will help push for the, uh, again, whether or not it will be 53 trillion or whatever the number will be and when we will hit it. I, I don't want to be the uh, the predictor of that number, but I, I see a very positive trajectory for ESC investing in the future because it's here to stay. I think it's... it's um, 
And it's also because I think that ESG, the definition have evolved quite a lot over the time. What we believed ESG were 10 years ago is definitely not the same today. And that has been partly due to disclosure. A lot of companies have improved how they report um, about ESG matrices. Climate change is a really good example. Emission scope one and two. And that helps create a better understanding and transparency in the market of the potential risk, uh, both in the short term and the long term for ESG investing. And that will help the transition as well. Ricky, thank you for your thoughts on ESG investing. Lots of opportunities there. That's Ricky Jacobson, head of ESG research at Nordia Asset Management.